morning fam. We're doing morning tea. What are we having? Cheddar bunnies. Little cheddar bunnies. I have bang regret, but we all knew that was gonna happen. Of course it was gonna happen. There's nothing wrong with them. My friend Tori who cut them did an incredible job. Um, also nailed my color. She is a really good hairdresser. There's nothing wrong with Tori. The problem's me. I have bang regret. Mm -mm -mm. Bang regret. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, what else? They'll grow up. Oh, I'm just waiting for our groceries to be delivered. Again, 25 minutes left of the two hour window. And that will be very annoying if they don't turn up again. We'll see. It's just gone 10 a.m. And my grocery order hasn't arrived for the second time. Our buzz is not gone at all this morning. Either our buzz is definitely broken or they're doing it wrong. I mean, I know one part of our buzz is broken. It's not broken anyone in. We checked it. The bell goes. I'm gonna leave you here and go outside and ding the bell so we can test. Fairly certain it went. But I was like, surely I'm gonna come back and watch that playback. Hey, gorgeous. Love you. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna watch that playback and it's not gonna be going, and then that's gonna be the reason why we get the groceries delivered twice. No, no, the buzzer goes. You're wrong, Amazon. We were here. Not my fault. I just got off the phone with Amazon. The order is delayed. Fun fact about the order on Saturday, which is extremely interesting and completely stupid, is our delivery time frame was between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. But Amazon has a new rule that if they get to the property before seven, they're not allowed to call, they're not allowed to ring the buzzer, they're not allowed to make contact or do anything. So they got to our place at 6.10 and they considered that being attempting delivery, but like we were here, but they didn't, they couldn't do anything. So they literally, turned up to the property and were like, oh, it's before seven, and then they left. So I said to the woman, I'm like, what do you expect me to sit out in my stoop and wait? And she's like, I know they haven't updated the website yet. It's ridiculous. And our current order today is delayed. And she said, if it's not here by 11, call back and we'll refund the order, which is great. Thanks, Amazon. But I still don't have groceries and it's been three days. I'm gonna put her down for a nap. I'm gonna wait another hour and then I'm gonna go do the laundry because it's a really beautiful day and the laundry needs to dry and it's not gonna dry if it's sitting on the floor dirty. Is it? Is it? Is it? I was just watching Sarah DG's YouTube video about millennials entitled, Why Millennials Are the Worst. And I'm gonna take out my AirPod for a second so we can discuss this a little further. <gasps> Amazon order. I'll be out in a second. All right, speaking of millennials, I just got my groceries delivered by Amazon. So they come in these bags. So this is all our pantry stuff. And then all the cooler stuff comes in these. But when it arrives, they take all the freezer bricks out and just give you your bag of food and take the totes back so they reuse them. And I said to her, I was like, wow, those bags look really cool. You could really step up your picnic game with a bag like this. She said, well, you can have it if you want. It's technically yours. So she gave me two. Two. But y'all wanna know the best part? She still took the freezer bricks out and on one of them she went to take the bricks out and they were dry ice. And I was like, can I keep those two? We can science. Oh my God. So I have two of those. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to Pinterest science stuff you can do for kids with dry eyes slash adults cause they like to have fun too. I'm gonna put my Amazon order away and we'll get back to my chat about being a millennial. millennial, but I did only order one avocado. Um, I just want to put out a really big thank you to Amazon for sending me bananas that I can't eat for a week and a half. Hi, how was your nap? Was it good? You were very tired, huh? She slept hard. 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 So the millennial debate, they're so harshly 
looked upon. It's also just a term, millennials. I don't know, I'm just not a, I'm not a fan. So I think what Sarah Deji was saying, millennials are born between 1984 and 2004. So that 20 year period. Being born in 1988, I'm right at the beginning. I think that's why I'm finding it really hard to be put into that category. She mentioned something in her in her video that she was getting into film and practice and, and just trying it out and you know, doing something that she didn't know how to do and wanted to learn because she'd never done it before. And someone ripped into her in the comments because like, oh, this millennial doesn't know how to use a film camera. Oh. I know how to use a film camera because that's what I started on. So like, I feel like there is a big distinction and I'm not saying, Sarah DG, you don't know how to use film, there's a problem there. You didn't grow up with it, it's totally fine. But like, I still had cassette tapes when I was little. So I feel like millennials that are born at the beginning, like 1984 to 1990, are different from the ones born 1994-ish, 2004. You know, when I was a kid, you would record movies off the TV on your VHS tape, and you'd record them in long play so you could fit two movies on one tape. And then if it was one of those tapes and someone had popped the thing out so you couldn't use it to record again, you just stuffed a little bit of paper in there and taped it up so you could still use it. When I was growing up, you still made mixtapes, but then we got CDs and you would make an MP3 CD because you could fit way more tracks on there. So it'd be like an MP3 CD mixed tape CD situation. I remember when cell phones became like way more mainstream. I remember when you could only use a phone to call and you couldn't even store numbers in it. You had to store them up here in your brain address book. When we were younger, I was very lucky that mum tried very hard to have a computer in our house. And our computer, it didn't do a whole lot, ran off dust, black screen, green writing, and the floppy disks were this big and actually floppy. But at the same time, being the millennial that I am, I had a Walkman, and then I had a Discman, and then I had an iPod. I got the trifecta, but I think I just find it hard to be considered a millennial because I had so much of the old stuff. I don't know. I feel like I'm more old school than that. <laughs> I love this song when I was younger and I was just thinking about it and I put it on. Luna also loves it. Black Eyed Peas Weekend, mm, so good. Good Luna. Loves it. Smell and dance party. Well, then you guys should probably update your app then. Okay, I just want to find a doctor to give her her vaccinations and it's getting, it's so complicated. All these people are coming up on your app as people I can go see, but none of them are actually, now you're telling me they're not in the network. So you're telling me I can just go straight to the doctor, but they're telling me I have to come to you to do it. Like, do you see how that makes no sense? I'm trying to organize a doctor to get Luna's vaccinations done. It's taken me all nap time so far. It's been about an hour. It would be super beneficial for the call centers in America to learn the phonetic alphabet. Um, okay, I think, I guess that, that's all for now. Thank you very much for your help. We got your pediatrician. Yay! Hey! After all that, it's time for some fun. Let's play with some dry ice. I don't really know how this is gonna go. Oh, what? Well, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw it in. Wow! Whoa! It's warm! I didn't think it would be warm. Is that pretty cool? <coughs> yeah? Wow! Science! Luna's asleep. So I'm gonna try and get my hair done before Nate gets home. And then after about 20 minutes, oh, there's a space on us. Ridiculous. Two or three weeks ago, there was a whole lot of shots of like Fee and I crying or being sad. Just vlogs where, where we'd had hard days. 
we'd kept track for a while on the whole like whether New York or we won a day but we haven't done that for a bit and the good news is that's because we've been winning and we're still winning but on the way home tonight it got me thinking about what what was the hardest about moving countries what I found the most difficult why was it so hard why did it suck why were there days where we were like New York won and would I have done anything different I don't I don't think I would have done anything different it was way harder moving countries than I ever thought it was going to be also far more expensive than I thought it was ever going to be I'm not someone that deals real well with unknowns I love a challenge but I also like to be in control and there was so many moments in that first few weeks where I had no control like just red tape just made stuff that shouldn't be hard hard one of the things that was definitely the hardest was trying to find a house and that that was like super demoralizing I think I think from my perspective as you know right now I'm the one that works Fee's a full-time mum and so it's on me to make sure that we've got a roof over our head we'd moved here for a job for me yeah I had the job but we were struggling to find the roof and so like that made me feel super down because I felt like I wasn't doing my part like Fee was doing her part looking after Luna while I went to work and I know it's stupid we we're both looking for the place we we're both bringing like Fee contributed to that just as much as I did but I don't know I think you just as a guy you feel like it's your responsibility to do that can discuss societal expectations another time finding our home our space definitely was the biggest turning point just meant that we could chill that like if we got in here and had this space and didn't have anything other than a mattress on the floor and somewhere for Luna to sleep but long as we had our space to come home to at the end of the day and at the moment it's a bit like that you know our bed at the moment is a mattress on the floor but I don't know uh, at some point I want to do a way more in-depth video talking about what it takes to move to New York cost and money and time and connections and just what I don't know share what we've learnt in case it makes it easier for somebody else that decides they want to move here there's plenty of people if you google it that have done the same thing and, you know, the more you know right but we are definitely winning more days than New York's winning now in fact I'd suggest that New York's not winning any days anymore so we're gonna crack a bottle of wine we're gonna sit down on the couch and we're gonna get some work done hey mate what? show us your hair <laughs> I still don't have a hair dryer yet, this might be a problem. <laughs> it looks a little bit like you've got one of those like party wigs. Ones that are made out of tinsel? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>